Welcome back to Shifting to Solids. Today we're going to be talking about the external thread tool in Onshape. Um, and it's kind of a misleading tool uh, because it doesn't actually throw the threads on there. So I'm going to have a, um, a fix for that and show you a different way. Um, and it uses uh, feature scripts from the community. So it might work one day and they'll update it and it might work a little bit different. So just use this as a kind of general tutorial. Um, but if you're using this for any kind of like milling or you're going to add your threads afterwards, it'll, it'll help out to kind of call out threads. Um, but this will, this will be kind of a general overview of how the external thread tool works. So like always, let's get started with the sketch. We're going to start on the top plane, hold down shift and S to bring up that, uh, sketch letter P to hide those planes N to normalize our view. And if you follow me, up to the top, you will see that we have to draw a circle. So let's draw a circle, simple circle off our center point. And we're just gonna make this one a quarter inch. So 0.25, um, we'll zoom in. And now I have a circle that is a quarter inch. Well, can't throw threads on a flat plane. What we need to do is turn that into a 3D model. So shift and E on your keyboard. And let's give that some uh, dimension. Let's give it, let's make it two inches so we can show kind of the way this thread tool works. Two inches tall and now I have a cylinder. So what we're gonna be doing, I'm not really gonna make a bolt, but just kind of showing like a piece of all thread just to get the general point across. Um, once we have that, you'll see in our, our 3D tools up top, we have our external thread. So add an external thread to a cylindrical part by selecting a leading edge or edges, specify the standard size, pitch length, in type and optionally add a chamfer or an undercut. A lot of stuff to do. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually um, 3D render anything except for the undercut and the chamfer. I really wish it would show the threads. So there's again, there's an extra tool I'm gonna show you how we'll do that, but we'll get there when we get there. And again, the second I say this, I know Onshape always is updating and they'll probably fix this after I've made this tutorial. So maybe we'll update that as we go. So we'll click that external thread and it's asking me up here for cylinder edges. So if I zoom into my part, I'm gonna click this top piece here and um, it's giving me an issue. It's telling, hey, the thread length is greater than the cylinder length. Well, if you remember when we extruded it, we only extruded it to two inches. So if I tell this now, hey, I only want this to be two, you'll see now that my whole length of my cylinder has now turned orange. If I made it one and a half, you'll see that it's gonna go a half inch from that bottom and it's only gonna thread up one and a half inches away from here. And I can give it any kind of variation in between there. Maybe I have a bolt that only has threads half an inch up. So we can do it like that. Now what's cool is it automatically picks what I have. So I have my, my ANSI or my ISO, I can go and pick different ones. Um, it defaulted to quarter inch. Now I can pick my threads per inch, 20, 28, 32, whatever it might be. I can go in there and pick all that. Um, I can go up to next and it'll do the full length. So I don't have to worry about that, that two inch or, you know, but if we go blind, that's when I'm able to add how long I want that to be. Obviously I can't have longer than my piece is. So I leave it at anything less than two. So we'll do it again. We'll do uh, 0.75 is what we'll do. And I'll say, we can mess with this. We can do our add chamfer. If I click an add chamfer, we'll zoom in on here. You'll see it's gonna add that chamfer for that bolt to start a little bit easier. If you have a specific setting um, or you have a specific bolt, or maybe you're making your own bolts at a specific degree angle, right? Whatever you need to do, you can edit these length and angle. We'll go ahead and put it back at 30. Um, if you wanna add an undercut, we'll go to the bottom down here. You'll see it will add an undercut and you can tell it exactly how much of an undercut, how long is that undercut gonna be, and what is that diameter? Is it gonna be only a little bit smaller than? Right, if we're 0.25, I can't be bigger than it, so 0.24. Let's go point two. See what it does there. 
it's not liking me today, 0.125. There we go. Okay, so an undercut of an eighth of an inch, it's about half that size, but I can go lower than that too. So any kind of undercut you wanna do and how long is that undercut gonna be, you can spread that smaller or bigger depending on what your needs are. Now, this is all cool, right? We have our quarter 20 bolt. I'm gonna accept it. I'm gonna get rid of that undercut. We'll leave that chamfer on there, but I say, okay, cool. Now, that doesn't look like a bolt to me, right? There's no threads on it. Even though we just use that external thread tool, there's no actually drawn threads. Now, this is where on shape kind of lacks in some areas, but also this is really cool because people in the community have come up with their own problem to this solution or solution to this problem, sorry. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up here to add custom features. If you have no custom features, you're gonna see this add custom features button. Me, however, I have a lot of things already added, um, different tools that I've used through for different things, but essentially you're gonna click that add custom features button. Now, it's not just spelled out for you. They're not everywhere. So you gotta kind of find them. I've done some research and I've, you know, custom features on, uh, as a search on YouTube and just watch people. But a cool place to look is this community spotlight. There's a bunch of stuff in here of people making all kinds of stuff. So if you're doing stuff with chains and belts, sheet metal folding, aerofoil script, that one looks pretty cool. I'll have to mess with that later. Changing edges, uh, part draft, circular pattern in a different way than the one that we have on this. So there's a bunch of stuff that's specifically keyed for a one off reason, right? Onshape's not going to make a tool that does a specific, very, very specific thing because they don't know what you're going to use their program for. So what's cool is that the community has come up with their own features. So what we're going to do in the community spotlight, we're going to type in thread and you'll see this one by, it's called PP underscore thread creator public. Um, go ahead and click that one and see how mine's already blue. If I click it, it'll say custom feature was removed from my toolbar. So this is what you'll look like. You'll see that it's white, click it once, and now you'll see custom feature thread creator was added to your toolbar from the version, whatever. And that's how you go about adding it, okay? Um, in another document I'll show you here, this is that linked document, and this is gonna be the how all these things work. So if you're like, this is great, but I have no idea, these are what all these boxes tell you, right? If you're a machinist and you know all the thread pitch and you know everything, you probably know how to do this by yourself and you know the math and you know all the geometry involved. But if you're a high school kid or you're uh, just a hobbyist and you're like, well, I know, it's, I know what a quarter 20 bolt is, but I don't know the pitch and I don't know this and I don't know that, right? This is kind of a note card that you can use um, from here. So don't mess with these, but this is how this works. So it's feature script that somebody made in the community. Let's go back to our original drawing. So that being said, let's add some threads. So now that we have this, if I click here, I can go thread creator. And now it's asking me my faces to thread. So if I zoom in, I can now click this face and you'll see that that's way too big, right? Way, way too big of a thread for a quarter 20 bolt. So we would have to figure out our pitch. So if we, do a quick Google search. Google will tell me that a quarter 20 thread or a quarter 20 bolt will have a thread pitch of 0 0.050 inches. So right here, 0 0.050 and we'll press enter. And you'll see now that's starting to look like a quarter 20 bolt. Um, we can go fully threaded. I can add a taper and I can give a taper angle. And I think that's kind of where that, um, that chamfer comes in in that first one. So we'll, we won't add a taper right now, but we'll say, okay, I'm going to go back into my external thread tool and delete that chamfer. And let's go from there. So you'll see without that, it's just a solid flat bolt. But if I go into my thread creator and I start that taper, you'll see it'll add that taper as well. And it's starting to add and do those tapered threads. So that's, it's like an easier start. Um, you can go fully threaded. You can tell it how many turns you want it to do. So if I did number of turns, 15, let's say I only wanted 10. It's only gonna go up 10 threads. Um, put that back to 15. 
if I wanted it to be a distance, I could give it the same thing. So if I wanted it to go up one inch, it's gonna try, but remember that face that we picked only went up 0.75. So I can go 0.75 and I could go 0.5 and you'll see that it's gonna give me that, that distance. So whatever you wanna do, however you need to do it, um, that's how you go about using the thread creator custom feature. So now we have some threads that we can actually see, which is really, really cool. I wish Onshape would make this happen. Um, I guarantee you, as I say this, that's probably what's gonna happen. They're gonna fix it and they're gonna make the external thread tool actually throw threads on there. Um, the other way to do it would be to go in and actually draw that. We'll put, turn this to the right side like so. Um, I would have to draw this face and then do like a sweeping revolve or a sweep com uh, command to cut it out. It's a lot, it's a big long process. So using this, this method seems to work the best for me. Um, I'm gonna delete that, that thread piece there and we'll try it with another example. But what I want you to understand is if I go to my sketch one, remember we did a quarter inch bolt. So I'm gonna double tap that, double click that, and I'm gonna make that a one inch circle, okay? Everything's gonna stay the same. I'll go extrude, We'll go up two inches just like we had. And if I check in my external thread, it's wanting to make that a quarter inch, but it can't. So it says, gives you this error that says non-matching thread size selected. I can't make a one inch hole a quarter inch bolt, right? So what you need to do is go in here and select it. But I wanna show you how cool this is. If I delete this version of it and I'll do external thread again, and I click the cylinder edges, you'll see that it auto corrected to a size one with eight threads per inch. And it gives me kind of the most common options. Maybe I wanted 12 threads per inch. Okay. So this is cool. If you are uh, trying to figure out how you want to make this and you're like, you know what? I want to go back and change it. Just know, just pick that edge and we'll say, okay, I can go back here, change my sketch. We'll change this now to a two inch. We'll go to my external thread, non-matching thread, uh, deselect that, reselect, you'll see size two threads, four and a half. And it's saying, hey, when people usually make two inch bolts or two inch threaded pieces, they only ever run with four and a half threads per inch. So you're like, oh, maybe I needed to put, incorporate that into my design and I need to know for the future how this should work. So that's a cool way to do that. We'll go from here, we'll click the thread creator. We'll add some more threads on it, face to thread. We're gonna uh, thread this face and you'll see it's adding a pitch of one, two, five. Um, I could find a two inch bolt really quick, I guess. Uh, two inch bolt thread pitch. Um, It looks like it says, I'd have to find that all the way, but 120, 125 looks like a, a pretty good deal. I'd, I'd have to figure out the math on that, but it's looking like a 2.8. You can come in here and scroll that down. If we go based off of what we had in our external thread, it'd be four and a half threads per inch. Um, so we could go here, maybe a little lower, 125 maybe. That might be a little too many threads. Uh, but you get the idea. Figure out what your, your parameters are, and that's how you go about clicking it and making that happen. So um, very, very intuitive way to make threads. If you're doing it yourself and you're actually putting those threads on, this is a way you can do that. Use that thread creator tool. Again, if you follow, um, I'll put the link for this actual thread creator document in the description, but this is how you do it. You can also throw it on the inside of stuff. So pay attention to that, play with that. I think when we go start doing some more videos with project specific um, drawings, I will show you guys how to do the threads on the inside and how to make that stuff happen. So 
Uh, that's going to do it for us today. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying all the stuff. Thank you to everybody who tuned into the tournament. Um, the kids are super excited. They had a blast. They're uh, just waiting for prizes to show up. And they are already ready to be spending those, those gift cards and using those mice and keyboards and getting ready to start drawing some more stuff. So thanks again to all the sponsors, everybody who watched, everybody who liked. Um, and remember, reach out to Toby to see if you want to run this as run a tournament with your own school. Um, we're really excited to make more happen. And I'd love to help him comment, commentate and do another tournament like this in the future. So see you guys later.